what we're going to do here next, now that we have widgetized the feature box and we have a widget area here, the next thing we're going to do is add a text widget to it and uh, turn that text widget into a call to action. Refresh this and now we should have a... Yes, there we go. Now we've got a blank widget area sitting right here. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is then we're going to add a widget to that widget area. So if we come back over to Appearance and Widgets, and we will grab a text widget. So we'll open this up, grab a text widget, and drag it down here. And I think what I'm going to do here is just say, uh, get our free report. Get our free report now. And we'll go ahead and hit save. And if we come over and look at our plugin, now we have a little heading up here, get our free report now, and the rest of it's blank. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a, an Aweber opt-in form and we're going to add it to this. Uh, it's a very common uh, thing to do is to use Aweber as a or, or use a, uh, a free offer to entice people to opt into your email list and then you can communicate with them and continue to communicate with them over time. And so that's what uh, that's what this is going to do. It's going to give them a chance to download to give you their email address and then download some free report. So we're going to come over to our Aweber account here and just for grins I'm going to take my BYOB Facebook list and I'm going to use that as the form for this. So I'll come over to here to web forms and select that web form. I have a very generic plain web form that I have and if you go to my Facebook page I add styling to that form inside the Facebook page so that it looks like this as soon as that loads so this right here this is what it looks like in the context of the BYOB website Facebook page and it's this exact form and it, the reason why it is able to look like this instead of otherwise is because of styling that we've added to this page but well, we're going to do something similar to that in a second but nevertheless if we come over to here and grab our form which in this case is step three and select them and install my form and for the time being I'm just going to use the JavaScript snippet because it's fairly easy to style this copy that and then come back over to the widget and paste it and hit save now you'll see I have my opt-in box uh, sitting right here at the top of this page. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little block of text beside this. So before that script I think what I'll do is say div and then style equals float colon left and then width colon let's call it uh, 250 px we'll just give it a little inline style here and then uh, here we'll insert some sort of of a text call to action action and then we'll put a div closing div tag there that should actually work just fine we hit save come back over to our page and refresh it okay so here's our text call to action and here's our form and here's our heading 
And so now we have the ability to style this form. Uh, Brian asks whether or not AWeber is free. No, AWeber is not free. It's fairly inexpensive for under 500 people. There is a free service, a MailChimp. Well, I think MailChimp still has a free system for under 500 members on the list. I don't know that for sure. I prefer AWeber to MailChimp pretty significantly, so that's why I teach AWeber. The, the same concept holds true, that is, if you're using MailChimp or if you're using any other uh, email autoresponder system, you can cut and paste their form code and place it into this text widget and still accomplish the same task. Anyway, what we'll do next is we'll use the plugin now to style this. And so if we come back over to our simple feature box plugin, now that we've widgetized the feature box, we've added a text widget to it, now we have this chance of adding some styling to that. And I think the first thing we're going to do is simply add a background color. And I think for the moment, we're just going to add a really light gray background color. Once we do that, you'll see the extent of the feature box in this form here. Okay, so our feature box is this light gray color, and it's going all the way around here. Now I think what we want to do is lower the top of the box so that it matches the top of our widget area and then provide some padding so that we move the contents of this away from the edges. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add some top margin and I think that looks like to me like it was about 20 pixels. And then we should also add some let's see let's add 10 pixels of top padding and let's add 20 pixels of left padding and see how that turns out. If we refresh this. Oh yeah, that well, you know, maybe 24 pixels or 22 pixels or something like that, just to drop that down. But you can see now we've got this thing offset. And it could be actually that we want to add a little bit more margin to the left of this to get this to line up with that edge, and maybe even a little bit more margin so that it's further away here. So let's add, say, 12 pixels of margin on either side of this. And so the left margin is 12, and the t right margin is 12, and I'll bet you that this will now line up with the extent of the post. Yeah, see, now we've got a nice line up here, and if the post box actually continued on up there, you'd see we had a similar one here. So that's a pretty good arrangement. Now let's add some more styling to this.